Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Indie's Trusted Servant Show on inspiresmall.biz slash Indie's Trusted Servant. Uh, I'm Danny O'Malley. I'm Indie's Trusted Servant. What is that? Well, I do customer service training and keynote speaking about customer service. Mm -hmm. It's all about the culture of the organization. I learned all of that from the hand of the master, my late father, Joel O'Malley, back in the O'Malley food markets days and even before that. What's the Indies Trusted Servant Show on InspireSmall.biz? I like to describe it as lively local small biz uh, and community talk where you can feel the pulse of Indy. And today it's my pleasure to introduce you all to Mary Clark, who is the head of the Global Village in the in the international marketplace you got it in the lafayette square area and this is a really a cool thing that i'm really excited to bring to all of you because i grew up in that neighborhood uh albeit about a mile from there and uh, my wife and i bought our bought my parents home when they moved to carmel in 1970 and we shopped at the lafayette square shopping center and hung around that neighborhood all the time so i have a great uh uh, love for that area. And as everybody knows, it's had its difficulties. The shopping centers had its difficulties. But we have the international marketplace with all these ethnic restaurants mm -hmm. centered around Lafayette Road and 38th Street, north, south, east, and west of there. And inside that is the Global Village. So we're going to talk about the international marketplace a little bit and the Global Village with Mary. But Mary, first of all, Tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and your background and how you came to the Global Village. Well, Danny, let me tell you this. So I, my first job, my first working career was at Ellis Airs in Lafayette Square Mall. You had told me that. In the late 70s, yes. And yes. so I worked for Airs for about 13 years where I graduated to being a buyer for Ellis Airs. So, and then I left Airs, went to work for for Value City Department Store. Uh, when I, they first hired me, I worked at the store out east, but within a couple of years, they moved me to the West Side Store. So I'm back at home. I end up being the store manager for that Value City Department Store. And then as God would have it, I had a granddaughter in the late 90s. And so I left Value City to go work for National City Bank at 38th and Georgetown Road, okay. still in the still, area. Still in the area. So my, and I raised my children in that area. My children went through to Pike schools, right? Pike, did you go to Pike Northwest? Where? I was in the first integrated class of Christmas Attics High School. No kidding. Yes, I was. No kidding. Yes, I was. Okay, I'm not going to ask a, you what year that was. Yeah, but that's a story in itself. But <laughs> I it was a know great, it is. It's a great story. It is. But it is. Um, anyway, so I've worked in, in the area all my adult life. I raised my babies in the area. I love the International Marketplace area, the Lafayette Square area. And I know that people tend to say we went on hard times. Well, we had a dive. Yes, we did. But the best thing I think that could have ever happened to the area as, in, as Indianapolis was changing and our new brothers and sisters, I like to call them our newcomers, started moving to Indianapolis. Of all right? these different ethnicities. All of these different yep. ethnic Say, I can't say that word. You tricked me there. <laughs> you tricked me there. But anyway, um, as all these different people started moving into Indianapolis, and the old business businesses were leaving. Guess who was taking over those storefronts? Those immigrants. Those immigrants. Yep. I like to call them newcomers because that's what was happening. We went from a traditional black and white community to a community that was welcoming to everybody. I don't know if people know this, but on one block today, you can go to Ethiopia, you can go to China, you can go to Greece, you can go to Japan, you can go to Peru, Cuba. Where would you like That's to go? That's just one block. That's just in one block <laughs> yeah, in yeah. the international marketplace area. 
We our foods. I mean, oh my gosh, the restaurants are amazing. I and I didn't bring one to show today, so hit my hand. But we have a food guide that's called Passport to Indy's Best Global Cuisines. If you want to travel the world without leaving Indianapolis, the international marketplace is the place to be. Give everybody the the, the, the boundaries. The boundaries, kind of, of of the international marketplace. So our boundaries are from 38th and High School Road to 38th and Commercial, from 38th and Lafayette to 46th and I'm sorry, from 30. 30th in Lafayette to 46th in Lafayette. And and what I was going to say is if you like the foods, then you probably could go to a grocery store. There's about 40 different markets or groceries in the area within those boundaries. I will tell you this story. A gentleman by the name of Andrew Nelson worked for the National Geographic magazine. He came and I took him on a tour of the area. He said he's traveled the world and he's never been anywhere where he can find as many oils and spices in one place. He loved the international market. That's cool. You know, sidebar to that, but I've been to a lot of cities where there are ethnic areas. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and Milwaukee stands out. You can go down this long road in Milwaukee and go into different neighborhoods, but it's all Greek restaurants here yes. or all Italian restaurants there. But in the international marketplace, they're all in one place. All continents are represented with the exception of Australia and, of course, Antarctica. But all continents. I don't think you're going to get Antarctica. <laughs> but all continents are represented in the international marketplace. That's that. It's very cool, and I recommend it if you're looking for a unique uh, dining experience. Just... Just Google International Marketplace and you can get a list of them. And you'll get a list of them, but let me also say this. Every other Wednesday and one Thursday a month, and you can find this on our website at imcoalition.org, we have a lunch tour and a dinner tour. So if you're a little squeamish and not sure what to try when you go to these restaurants, just join our lunch and dinner tours. They are amazing. Sometimes we get to get the owners to come out and kind of tell their stories about how they ended up here and a little bit about their foods. Yeah, great. So that's the International Marketplace. Yes. And that's Mary Clark, Crispus Attics graduate, first integrated class at Crispus Attics. Uh, I should tell you uh, that uh, one reason I went to Xavier University was so I could watch Oscar Robertson play basketball for the Cincinnati Royals. My aunt loved Oscar. <laughs> well, my, just... <laughs> my dad took me to see Oscar play for uh-huh. Attics when I was like, eight person. years old. Yeah, and I, yeah. I became a fan right away. Now, let's talk about the Global Village, which you are in charge of. Yes. And which you gave me a tour of last week, and I was blown away, and it is, tell everybody where it is. <laughs> so the Global Village Welcome Center is at 4233 Lafayette Road. And if you remember the old Value City Furniture Store, we've taken over that space. So it's like a 55,000 square foot museum and an event hall. We have galleries in there that represent each continent. So whether you're from Africa to Australia, um, it's the place to be. The cool thing I think about the Global Village Welcome Center, a couple of things, is one, all of the artifacts that are in the museum today, they come from people from all over the world that now call Indy home. And not just Indy home. They may have traveled here from Milwaukee and they've come back and they'll bring us things. We have some beautiful, beautiful artifacts. And before you do that now, so you are working in the building you used to work in for Value City? No. No? So I before I was in the department store. Today I'm in the furniture store. The furniture store. Yes. You were in the department store. Yes. Okay, I was gotcha. the department store manager. So, so she's got some pictures of some of the artifacts from the Global Village. And we'll talk about those, and then we're going to talk about the event center and, yes. and all the other stuff. So I have some pictures here, and I hope they show really well, but I like to tell this picture. The dolls that are on the top, the Indian dolls here, you're not going to believe this, but they were found in our local Goodwill store. And our curator found those dolls. But the best part about this story is not that they were given to Goodwill to resell, right? 
But a young lady from India came into the museum about a couple of years after we owned the dolls, and she brought us another one. And I was like, oh my goodness, that looked like the dolls we found in Goodwill. She said, yes, my aunt made these dolls. Oh my goodness. Back in India. Wow. So someone brought them here, decided like we do, we're tired of something, we give it to Goodwill. We ended up with them, and now we have the dolls. From, from directly from directly India. Directly from India. Wow. And we know that they were handmade. Now, the picture that they're sitting on, I will tell you, and I won't tell you all the stories, but the picture here, I was in one of the local grocery stores, um, and I said to the gentleman, I said, Muhammad, why do you have this beautiful picture in the stock room? He said, Mary, look at those people. They're from India. I'm from Yemen. My grocery store represents the Indian uh, in, Yemen community, right? And so he gave me the picture, and it's now in our museum. So we, we have some great stories like that that we can share about some of the artifacts. The Polish community, oh my gosh, they came into the museum. And as Danny knows, he's, he's from Ireland, or his family is, and his community is not represented. But when the Polish community came in, I'm telling on you now. <laughs> so We're the, working on it. We're working yes, you on are. It. But when the Polish community came in, they said, where are we? We're not represented. And so they brought us this beautiful dress and the floral, um, the flor flowers are painted on the outside of homes in, in, in Polish. So they created an amazing exhibit. They brought us about 40 pieces. So we now have a strong Polish exhibit. And, and not to tease Danny any longer, he shared with me today that there is a young lady that's quite interested in making sure that the Irish community is well represented in the global village. Yes. What, I just had to dig. There you go. There you go. <laughs> So Jane Elliott, if you're watching, that's who she's talking about. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so why don't you go ahead with the rest of the pictures, then we'll talk about the, 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 the rest of the stuff in the village. Okay, so next weekend, I think most everyone knows that the Lunar New Year is coming up. And the Lunar New Year represents Korea, China, Japan, and South, I said South Korea, China, Japan, and Vietnam right? And so we will be hosting uh, a Lunar New Year pretend countdown. And it's centered around the young people. So we're inviting everyone to our center on the 29th from 12 to 4. 29th so we'll, of January? Gen, 29th of January. There will be activities there for the young people to play. They will learn how to make origamis. They will learn how to dance the lion dance and other things in during that time. And then we will have treats for people to sample from these different communities. So one of the things at the Global Village Welcome Center is that we believe and we know that once people learn about other cultures, they learn that our differences aren't so different. And even if they are different, it's okay to be different. So that's what the Global Village is about. Beautiful. So there's more to so you have all the, these exhibit halls from different parts of the world. Yes. And you 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 mentioned the Polish one, that's in the European section. Yes. Okay. Um, but you've got them from from Asia and Africa and and everywhere imaginable. Yes. So show so, us some more beautiful pictures. So these outfits are from Guatemala, but the cool thing about here this, see this full outfit here. The Council General of Guatemala came to the Global Village Welcome Center right before he opened up. We had sent out a call to the Council Generals all over, and he showed up and he said he wanted to make sure that his country was represented. So all of these outfits are from Guatemala. And then we have Haiti. There's a designer, a local designer, well, he lives in Evansville, but he's from Haiti. That's pretty local compared yeah. to Haiti. <laughs> and so he designed this dress. But I will tell you, this particular designer is well known. And he recently won an Emmy for an outfit for one of the actresses. And please don't ask me. I don't remember the name. But um, his name is uh, 
Bernie Martin is the, the designer and his fashions are couture fashion. So we have a Bernie Martin design in the Global Village Welcome Center. So that's some of the artwork yes. uh, and some of the cultures that you represent. So let's talk a little bit about the events and also the um, what what events you might have that you haven't mentioned because I've got this brochure and there's some some events and plus you have an event hall. Let's talk about that a little bit. So we do. We have an event hall. Like I said before, it's important for those of us that work at the Global Village Welcome Center to to help create a place where everybody feels welcome and a place where everybody gets to learn about others and learn our differences aren't so different. So we have an event hall that sits about 900 people. It's pretty amazing. We host many events there, but we also encourage different cultures to come and share their cultures and have their event at our center. Our goal is to be that place that when you think culture, you know to go to the Global Village Welcome Center. Some of the events that we have, we have an event called Taste the Difference. Next August will be our 15th year hosting that event. Imagine yourself eating yourself around the world without leaving Indy. This past year, Danny, we had over 30 restaurants to participate. Is that all at the Global Village? It's all at the Global Village. In the so event hall? In the event hall. Okay. So okay. for one fee, you can just try everything. Now, you could, is there a date? Is that coming up? It is August the 18th, I believe, is the date. Okay. okay. It's, if that's a Saturday, whatever Saturday is close to that. Yeah. And once again, give us that website. So somebody Our that's web... interested, even though that's a ways off, mm -hmm. can go and figure out if they can attend. Imcoalition.org. Imcoalition.org. And if you follow us on Facebook, we post everything that we do. And it's International Marketplace Coalition. I'm sorry, it's Indies International Marketplace Coalition. You can find everything that we do. What about, uh, what is this dine-in at the Global Village? So the dine-in, um, imagine dinner in a movie. So we take a region of the world and we celebrate that region through food, through dance, through history about the region. So the last one we had, or actually I'm going to tell you about the, the Latino one we had, right? The, we started off trying, planning for five different countries to participate in this event. By the time we finished, there was 11 countries because every meeting we had, Somebody. One of, so they were like, well, what about uh, Cuba and what about Guatemala? So by the time that we finished, it was 11. But, but the thing of it is, or the key thing is, each country was required to bring three dishes. So think you have 11 countries, that's 33 dishes of foods that you get to eat that day. It was amazing and, and everybody dressed in their native clothing, but the best part of these events to me is that it's not, not just do those different cultures come, we Americans come and we get to learn. What do I always say, Danny? Our differences are so different. There you go. What about your International Coffee and Tea Festival? That's an, oh yes, that's an amazing, so that's in December. We just it's, missed it. We just missed it. It's <laughs> the first Saturday in December. The Coffee and Tea Festival, we have coffees and teas from all over the, the globe. Uh, you can sample them that day. You can purchase them that day. And then there's uh, performances that kind of pop up throughout the global village that you can participate. In. So that'll be in December. So again, you go, you go to the website. So I, I can tell you some of our upcoming events. Okay, so we're having the uh, Lunar New Year, the 28th, the 29th of this month. That's Saturday, right? And then after that, of course, next month is Black History Month. And so we will have a get an exhibit for Black History and every weekend that month, we will have some kind of emerging activity. But also the month of February and the month of March, we're celebrating artists from all over the globe that call Indie Home. So we have a World Art Expo, and that exhibit will start going up next month. And I believe that the um, 
celebration day for that exhibit is the 28th, Friday the the 28th, where we will be inviting everybody. You'll get an invitation, and you will too, to uh, come and and, and view some of the amazing artwork. I will tell you, this is our third year hosting that event. And hopefully you remember Jill Dittmeyer from WFYI? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jill came to the one we had right before COVID. She said it was one of the best art exhibits she had ever experienced. So we think this one's going to be even better. So please stop by the Global Village anytime the month of February to see the artwork. It will be up. And so that's what's happening in February. Okay, a couple of quick questions. Uh-huh. I don't want to cut you off on your events, though. You got more events to talk oh, about? Well, I don't have to talk about them. You can follow us on Facebook. Every there month go. there's a different event. A different event. Okay. Yes. And open to the public. And open. Right? And you open don't have to make a reservation. Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, a little history. Uh, when was the Global Village founded? So we opened our doors a in March of last year. It's that's so I knew it brand was brand new. new. Yeah, brand new. Our grand new. opening was October the 1st. Okay. But okay. the vision for it has been about 8 years in the making. And it it was a it, it would you call it a spin-off from the international marketplace? I mean, it is. Yeah. It, yeah. It it definitely is because the area is so richly diverse and you know like, like I said before, we have some amazing food restaurants in the area, right? And grocery stores and specialty shops. Well, as you get to know the people there, the one thing we started hearing over and over, we have all these amazing restaurants, we're known for that, but we need a place where people can really come and learn about us. And so that's about how it started. It's kind of like the State Museum of the International Marketplace. Exactly, you might exactly, say. yeah. So here's some e- economic questions. I'm always interested in economic impact, whether it's the Indianapolis Indians baseball team and how many people go downtown or how many, do you know how many people are employed in the restaurants and the markets in the international marketplace? Well, that's a hard question. I I thought it might be tough. It is hard, but what I can tell you this is that during the height of COVID, when restaurants and businesses were closing all across the city, the state, the country, right? You know how many restaurants we lost in the international marketplace? At the time of COVID, we had about 120. We lost four, but eight open. Today, we have over 130 ethnic restaurants. Wow. So the businesses survived during that time. Is it your perception that the restaurant specifically might have an easier time getting enough help than 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 the general population of restaurants because the people want to work. That and we are mom and pop businesses. So right. when you have a mom and pop, who's working in the mom well, and pop? Well, mom and pop <laughs> and the all other family and their members. Other families, yes. So yes. you know, and so yes, they did have a hard time because they lost the non-family members. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? They're doing okay. That's, They're doing okay. Well, that's really an incredible. Uh, when you see chain restaurants, I mean, a Bob Evans closing, or or and that and that happens, yes, right? Yes. And a, and a, 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 you know, a lot of it's due to not being able to have enough help. Yeah. And you say you've picked up, uh, you lost four, but you picked up eight. Wow. Let me tell you. <laughs> so we had a restaurant, and I can't think of the name of it. It's a Mexican restaurant that opened up, and I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to struggle, right? The day we went to their grand opening, by they opened at 10, by noon, there was not a seat in the house. Not a seat in the house. And it was not just, and I say the locals, and when I say the locals, I'm saying the people that look like them. And you know, but when we come, you know they're doing a good job, right? And th- these restaurants are, are restaurants and grocery stores, and uh, although grocery stores did not suffer, during the pandemic, oh, right, they, right. they really didn't. But our businesses as a whole, you know what else you might want to talk about? I don't know how much time we have. Yeah, I've got a couple minutes. Okay. So you might have heard that there is a new owner for that's a new developer in our area, right? Yeah. His name is Fabio, and I get his last name wrong, so I'm not going to say Delacruz. So, but Fabio has purchased almost 300 acres of land 
in the international marketplace area. He owns the mall. He owns where the old Value City department store used to be, that plaza. He owns commercial are, drive. Are there any plans specifically for the mall that you know of? Oh, yes. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Okay. Time. We got another couple minutes. So the mall land is there's eventually there will be apartments on that land. You, will they demolish the mall? No, the mall is going to stay the way it there, is, be, but it will be okay. repurposed somewhat. Okay. And when I say somewhat, we malls will never be what they were what they were and we have to come to terms with that yeah yeah so but this mall is going to become more of an experience there's going to be a hotel attached to the mall think about it we this mall sits right off of 65. Yep. this hotel is going to have an international flavor to it so every um area of the mall will represent a different continent okay it's going to be cool. amazing that's cool he's bringing i know you said you want to talk about the mall but i think you need to know the whole picture like he's bringing uh indoor futsal futsal is like an outdoor soccer but less people oh, play yeah right yeah, yeah. so that's going to be in the that'll area that'll bring families and all absolutely kinds of, and they yes. will go to the restaurants and, and they so will forth. go to the restaurants yeah. and then there's going to be a youth outdoor soccer stadium in the area and awesome. that's guaranteed to bring some 10,000 people to the area oh, yeah. every and, weekend. And they'll use the hotel and too, they'll, they'll come from out of town. Smart, right? huh? Yeah, that's, so, that's and, cool. <laughs> Smart, and the other thing that's I great. wanna say, because people are like, I, I hear people saying, is he gonna be able to pull this off? Well, this is what I know. I know that he paid cash for everything, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so I can't imag imagine anyone in their right mind paying cash. And not and, having a plan. And not having a plan, Yeah. right? Mary Clark with the International Marketplace and the Global Village. Thanks for being my guest today. Thank we could you. probably go on, but we're about out of time. Next week, my good friend, client, and uh, my mortgage guy, Albert Gonzalez of Teachers Credit Union, will be our guest and we'll talk about the housing market. Thanks for watching the Indies Trusted Servant Show and give us that website one more time. Iamcoalition.org. And it's I am as in International Marketplace, Marketplace Coalition. Or visit us on Facebook at Indies International Marketplace. See you all next week.